one of our former community members here in Holy Family was telling us how uh, football wasn't really his thing. So uh, he was on the football pitch and he was uh, in defence, so in the back line, and there was nothing, nothing really happening. So he just sat down and started picking grass, you know what I mean, just picking, picking grass. And his father was on the sideline looking out going, oh my God, <laughs> stand up boy, stand up boy. <laughs> so then of course what, what will happen invariably when you're, if you're sitting on the ground picking grass during a match is that the ball is going to dum, 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 bounce right past you and you're defenseless, like you're in the wrong position. You haven't, you haven't moved, you, haven't, you didn't see it coming. Uh, and obviously, that's a big disadvantage to your team. What's interesting, I find, about this, this today's reading and gospel, both are very interesting. We haven't time to do both. But I, I find that the first interesting from the book of the Apocalypse, very, very interesting. Uh, right to the angel of the church of Laodicea. I know all about you. How you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. But since you are neither, but only lukewarm, I spit you out of my mouth. We, you, you all see it as well if, you're, if you enter into a classroom and uh, there are some in the class who, you know, so they're sitting up the front with the smile on their face and they've got the red pen parallel to the blue pen, maybe the green pen for special occasions. And uh, they're, they're sitting there and they're taking it all in. And it's great, it's great. You know, they're very easy to teach. They're, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. Um, and then you've got the other kids, like, Usually they're the ones with, with, the, with the blue hair and the piercings are kind of down the back looking up going, what's that about like? <laughs> All right? But then you've got the others, right? You've got the others who just kind of sit there. <coughs> and they're the hardest. They're actually, it's actually easier to deal with the guys who, who disagree with you and say, sir, that's just stupid. Like, okay, explain that is stupid like. Explain that to me, just, just cl clarify, what do you mean this is stupid? Like, where's the problem? Where's the hole in the argument? And you can, you, can, you can work with those who are against you, in a way. But those who don't care, they're, they're the hardest, like, just because just they just don't care either way, you know? And they, they're the ones that are, that are, like, it's very disheartening, you know, apathy. As a teacher, apathy is a killer. Those who are good, they're easy to teach. Those who are hard work, if they make any step at all, you're like, fair play to you, well done. You, last year you were failing all the time, now you're getting C's. You know, that's, that's huge progress, well done. But those who just don't care either way, they're just the hardest, the, the lukewarm ones, right? The lukewarm. They're, just, they're the most difficult and the most challenging. And that exists in the church as well. Uh, and there's quite a bit of it, dare I say. And if you imagine a fortified city, and you've got the... the the watchtowers in the corners normally, up nice and high so they can see everything. And you can imagine like those who have that responsibility of, of defending the city, or at least of, of, of alerting the rest of the city of danger of approaching an approaching enemy, or, and they're sitting up there in their tower going, this is stupid, no one ever comes, I'm, I'm underappreciated, underpaid, underfed. The union, the union just isn't not representing us as it should, and our boss doesn't care. And because of that doesn't do his job and lets an enemy through the gates or lets a whole army surround them without raising the alarm, everyone suffers. See, luke lukewarmness, if, if we don't do our job, small as it may be, if I don't do my job, others suffer. You know, if I'm sitting down on the pitch and I'm supposed to be defending the goal, the team suffers. If, uh, if I'm supposed to be defending a city and I'm too busy complaining, feeling sorry for myself, the whole city could suffer. If we as clergy, if we don't stand up and call things out when they're wrong, the people of God will suffer. If as lay people, we don't say, look, we want to continue praying the rosary regardless of, 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 of what people say. And we can legally, and no problem at all in our families or wherever it may be, we can legally go to a Eucharistic Adoration Chapel in, in limited numbers. And so, you know, we, we, this is something that we want that we can do safely. Uh, if, if we just follow kind of lukewarmness, everyone suffers. Everyone suffers. And we, what we see in, in the church as well is this. Is, um, it's an interesting kind of a thing. Uh, it's, it, it, I think one could call it possibly like this supposed right to dissent. 
So it's something we spoke about before, but like, so the church has its teachings, right? So I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be aware of what those teachings are and I'm, I'm supposed to be teaching what those teachings are. Whereas there's a spirit out there, a spirit of dissent, which, which would encourage us to think that the church's teachings are this, but I can teach something opposite. I can teach, I can completely disagree and try and encourage others to do the same. That makes us two steps from where we should be. Because not only are we, supposed, are, we, are we not supposed to be fighting the church, we're supposed to be, yes, agreeing with the church, but not just agreeing with the church, we're supposed to be actually teaching what the church teaches. Not just agreeing with it, but actually sharing it. Okay? So it's, just a, it's a strange kind of a thing because this is what kills the church. People within the church tearing the church apart. People within the church you, you, look, we, we can have, we can, you can have a difference of opinion, but like, again, an openness to learn, an openness to discover, an openness to, to, to an ever greater depth of understanding. Absolutely. So we don't necessarily understand everything. Of course not. But there's a difference between not understanding everything and saying, this is stupid, everybody join me in rebellion against the church. That's just so, so dangerous. And that's what, what we see here, this kind of, this kind of lukewarmness and how, how dangerous it is. You know, you're not... You're not you're not entirely with it. You're not entirely against it. You're 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 in it, but fighting it, and it's 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 catastrophic. You know, I mean, like there are some famous people within Ireland, former presidents even, uh, who from within the church are trying to change all sorts of things. And yet there are other churches that believe exactly those things. Go join one of them. If 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 this if these are your core beliefs. And they're not Catholic. Well, then just go, go join the other church. Go join, go join the church that has your beliefs. But don't try and change the whole Catholic church because you disagree with some, with some points of teaching. That just makes no sense. Firstly, you don't have the right nor the power. And even if you managed to, that, that would be a whole group of people who would be wrong because they disagree with God's teaching. So, I mean, it's, you're better off. You're better off kind of be black or white. I don't like it. Don't, I don't agree. Okay, just leave then. Now, so obviously, we don't want, we're not, trying to, we're not here to kick people out, but to pollute the church from within, like that, that responsibility is on your head before God, not before, not before me or the Pope or anyone else, before God. That's so why lukewarmness is just so, so dangerous. Kind of, we, we just really have to be either we're for the Lord or we're against Him. And if we're for Him, we're for what He teaches, we're for what He asks, which can be yes demanding, which can be politically incorrect. Yes, get used to it. Because the gospel was never written to be politically correct. It was written to guide us to heaven. And sometimes that works with political correctness. Great. We're all for treating everyone equally. Absolutely. And sometimes it doesn't work with political correctness. So either way, though, we, we have to stand with the Lord because ultimately he's our judge. The Lord is our judge. Not political correctness. Not the amount of applause that we got during our lives. And not the amount of support that we got during our lives. And not the amount of wealth that we accumulated. None of that matters. I am rich, I've made a fortune, and I have everything I want, never realizing that you are wretchedly and pitiably poor and blind and naked too. On the other hand, we look at Zacchaeus, who messed things up seriously, worked for an occupying force, took too many taxes off people, so obviously because people were illiterate, it would have been very easy to defraud them. So you owe, and he sees that it's 15 denarii tax, you owe 20 denarii tax, and he keeps the five for himself. So he would have been hated. Working for people. But a person like that can actually turn around. A person like that can change. Mathematically, I'm not sure if this is even possible. He gives away half of his property, so you're already down to 50%, and then if you've defrauded someone, you're going to pay him back four times as much. You'd be hoping to God that there was, wasn't much evidence that you had defrauded people, or you won't be left with a penny. Right? But maybe that's it. Following the Lord is radical. It's a, it's a, it's a radical way of life. And by the way, radical, radical uh, comes from the, the Latin word meaning root. So a radical change means it changes from the root up. Everything changes. Following the Lord is a radical way of life. It, it's not cosmetic. It's not surface. It's not just doing the hair. Right? It's the whole way we live from the ground up. And this is what gives life. And that's why even after we've made 
terrible mistakes, we, if we wish, we can always come back. Allow the Lord into our lives, into our hearts, into our home. And if we do, I think we too will hear those wonderful words. This person too is a son or a daughter of Abraham. Today salvation has come into this house. For the Son of Man has come to seek out and save what was lost. Amen.